All right, can we turn our Bible to the book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 28? Luke, chapter 14, and verse 28. I just want to read this verse to give a background to what we want to do. Luke 14, 28 says, For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. In other words, Jesus is saying to you, don't start what you cannot finish. And before you start something, you must count the cost, whether you can finish. Many people have gone into marriage without knowing the distance of marriage, so they don't even know whether they can finish or not. They don't know what it is. All they were excited about is just getting married. For every single person that divorces, it's a sign that they didn't finish. No matter what may have happened, they didn't finish. But Jesus made something clear. The matter of finishing is a matter that must be clear before starting. You cannot finish if you don't settle the issue of finishing before you even start. And he said there is cost that you must ask yourself, can you bear this cost? When Jesus taught his disciples, about marriage in Matthew chapter 19. When he finished, did you know what the disciples said? They said, if the case be so, between a man and a woman, then it is better not to marry. And Jesus didn't condemn them. Jesus didn't say, why will you say this? That is Matthew 19.10. His disciples said to him. So they were talking to Jesus. His disciples said to him. If such is the case of the man with his wife, it is better not to marry. They said this to Jesus. And I thought Jesus would rebuke them that, hey, God created marriage. Don't say it's not good to marry. Did you know why the disciple made this statement? And look at the response of Jesus in verse 11 of that Matthew 19. But he said to them, All cannot accept this sin, but only those to whom it has been given. What is that saying about marriage that everybody cannot accept? I can tell you till today, it is the same thing. A lady called me from the US today. She told me about having problem with her marriage. The husband is in Ghana. She's in the U.S. And they're having problems. I said, number one, you have violated two important principles of scriptures. Genesis chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Genesis 2 says, you must cleave to one another. You are not cleaving. 1 Corinthians 7 says that you must not defraud one another. He says, except for fasting, and you must come together so that Satan, Satan, Satan does not tempt you. There's no way husband and wife who are not living together will not have issues. And particularly the fact that many of these people we are talking about are really nominal Christians, not really born against spirit faith Christians. Then I now asked her, have you been married before? She said, yes, for 20 years. And I told her, I said, you are not married. You are in an adulterous relationship. She couldn't take it. I said, I'm not sharing an opinion with you. That is the truth. I said, you can go and read it yourself in the scriptures. Jesus said, if a man put away his wife and marries another, he commits adultery. He says, if any married that woman that was divorced, he commit adultery. You were married for 20 years. The man left you. Got married to another woman. That is not an excuse for you to remarry. 
There is no one single verse in the scripture that anybody can read that says that, yes, you can go and remarry. No one single scriptures. If you have it, ma, please bring it forth. She couldn't bring forth any scriptures. As I said, I'm not sharing opinion with you. I know what I'm sharing with you may sound hard to you. But that's why I ask you if you are born again. If you are born again, that's what you signed up for. So ask yourself, are you committed to going to a marriage that no matter what happens, you can't divorce? Now, please, let me quickly clear this because many people, I don't know how some people understand some things. Because some people will hear this and say, so that's why, you, that's why people die in marriage. So people should go and die in marriage. People don't die in marriage. Marriage don't kill people, people kill people. There's a difference between leaving the house and leaving marriage. If somebody comes here now and holds a gun, will you not run out of this place? Some of you, you turn to a boat. Some of you, will do eye jump out of the window. You are, but does it mean next week, if everything is calm, you won't come back here? There's nobody that says you should not leave a house when somebody wants to kill you. I've not had any pastor preach that. And if not that they are hypocrites, we preach that you should not fornicate, you will fornicate. Then you will now say that they preach that we should not leave marriage. And that's one. You will now tell us that you are obeying that one. That's the hypocrisy of people of looking for somebody to blame for their problem. If you want to obey God, why not obey him? You that you go and marry somebody that is not saved. You won't listen to the counsel that you should not be unequally yoked together with unbeliever. When you now marry that person and he's giving you trouble, you will now say, they say that uh, we must not leave. What we say is that you can't divorce. We didn't say you can't run out of the house. If my wife suddenly carries a cutlass to cut my head, I will run out of the house. If we said to her, I'll come back. Running out of the house is not running out of marriage. The house does not make marriage. Marriage is a covenant. But I want you to see that what happened here, even though that's not what I even intend to do today, but it's important I establish that, that what did the disciples see? What did they hear that made them to say, if this be so between a man and a woman, it's better not to marry. And our generation is excited about marriage. People who lived with Jesus, who followed Jesus, who had his teaching on marriage, they say it's better not to marry. Why? Because they had the cost of marriage. What is that cost? Let me quickly show you. In that chapter 19 from verse 1, he said, Now it came to pass, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea, beyond Jordan. And great multitude followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any just reason i want you to note the background of the question number one they didn't come to ask that question because they wanted to obey god they didn't come to ask that question because they wanted to know the truth they came to ask that question because they wanted to test him many people asking questions about divorce it's not because they want to obey god so if they're asking and say sir eh, in this situation can i remarry and i say no you cannot remarry they're like ah why but you said you are seeking counsel you want to know the truth People are not seeking the truth. In fact, I can almost assure you, a person that is seeking the truth will already know the truth. It's so clear. So understand even in the days of Jesus, they were not asking questions about divorce in order to know the truth, but to trap Jesus. I want you to look at the response of Jesus. The question is, is it lawful? Is it right? Now look at what Jesus said. And Jesus answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning, Jesus is taking them back to Genesis chapter 2, made them male and female. In other words, and said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Many people don't understand what Jesus said here. Did you know what Jesus said here? Divorce is not possible. You can only separate two things. You can't separate one thing. I demonstrated it by mixing Coke and Fanta. And I asked that the, the best chemist in the world, they can never separate it. Once you mix Coke and Fanta together and put it in one bottle, you cannot separate it and get Coke and then get Fanta. It's impossible. Jesus returned us back to Genesis, the original plan of God about marriage. The disciples, their understanding was that, let me marry. If she misbehave, I'll fire her, pick another one. 
suddenly they realized that that was no longer possible. That's why they said, if it be so, it is better not to marry. But our generation is excited about getting married. You know why? We don't know the cost of marriage. Please, learn this and so that you won't frame ignorance later on in life. If you want to marry, say to it that divorce is impossible. If you have somewhere at the back of your mind that you will divorce, please enjoy your single life. There is no point getting into marriage. Just enjoy your single life. I have searched the scripture carefully. I have not seen one place for marriage except death. Even where Paul said that a brother or a sister is not in bondage in such situation, that means he didn't say that sister or brother can remarry. I said, you now want to interpret it that way. And I'm like, if Jesus didn't give room for that remarriage, then I won't interpret that scripture to mean remarriage. The Bible said that they should either stay or be reconciled. So ask yourself, this person I'm seeing, if he start behaving, am I ready? If she start misbehaving, can I stay? If you can't, please don't go into it. You see why I'm pained? Almost from morning to evening, every day now of my life. I'm handling marital cases. And the problem is that many people at this your state didn't pay attention. They were involved in other things. And they were catching feelings and catching cruises. And then they got into marriage carelessly. Marriage has become an effective trap in the hand of Satan to destroy Christians. Because you are the one trying to obey God. There's nothing that concerns unbelievers. They can divorce and remarry ten times. They are in darkness. You are the one that you will be asking questions about what does the Bible say? I've lost count of pastor's wives that have reached out to me on the cases of their husband involving in Syria. They've become Syria adulterers. The rate at which many pastors are committing adultery is unbelievable. What do you want the wife to do? To go and divorce him? So please, let, that's why I was telling somebody today, I said, I prefer to teach young people about marriage. So that before they make mistake, they can get it right. Say to it, ask yourself, is this what I'm prepared for? All right? Now, don't, don't misquote me. God created marriage. Marriage is good. Man is falling. And that is why it is only in Christ we can get marriage right. And I discovered today many people do not even know what it means to be born again anymore. Almost everybody I'm counseling is born again. A man that is sleeping with all kinds of women, having children outside, the wife will say, sir, my husband is born again. I'm like, what, what, make, what makes you say he's born again? Where is the born again there? He said by their fruit we shall know that. He didn't say by their titles. There are many people who are preaching on the pulpit today who are not born again. You don't say I want to marry somebody because that person led prayer or that person is singing. or that. Many of the brothers that you are seeing, I know many brothers, this is how they were all sitting down in fellowship. They are terrible men today. Terrible husbands. There is a story I'm handling. This man used to be pastor, assistant pastor in Lagos. He has moved to the UK. Relocated his wife and, and kids to the UK. And then this man told the wife, I'm no more doing. No relationship between us. I have another woman. That's, a, that's an assistant pastor here doing that in the UK. He is now in relationship with another lady in another country. He doesn't do anything with his wife. You will ask yourself, what has suddenly come over them? That is why you must get marriage right. It's not about we like each other. At this stage, you don't know anybody. All the smile, you are smiling to each other. None of you has been tested with money. You've not, you, they've not lodged you in a five-star hotel. And a beautiful lady will walk in and naked herself. You don't know what you will do. You look nice now. You don't look calm now. You don't know what it means to have 50 million in your account. And it's breathing. And you're on the bed and you say, ah, I have 50 million. And you know that this beautiful girl doing hookup. If you give her 50,000, you will sleep with her overnight and you have 50 million. Something will be saying to you, what's the big deal? Let me, let me even spend 100,000 on her. You are not yet tested. You don't know. And yet you'll be falling in love. You'll be catching feelings for one another and say, ah, that brother, eh? You don't know anything. 
I've seen people who were fellowship president. They've now left their wife. They are now living with strange women. Fellowship president when they were in school. You know, school, we are not yet tested. You don't know what it means to provide for your family. You don't know what it means to look for money. All right. Let's start what we intend to do today. The five hours of marriage. Because these are the things I'll be discussing also. I just lay down the foundation to show you that Jesus said it is important you count the cost. Some of what we will do today, you will see the cost too, so that you can make up your mind to get it right. The four hours of marriage represent the reality of marriage, the romance of marriage, the responsibility of marriage, and the reward of marriage. Now, these things, I have it typed. When I'm done, I will forward it to you. You can put it on your platforms. There is nothing hidden about it. This is it. I have to type them out. It's not exhaustive. Can you see what I wrote that filled all this place? I can, I can fill 10 pages. I just did this, and I'm going to send it to you people so that you put it on your platform. People can look at it. Let's start with the good one. <laughs> the one everybody likes. The romance of marriage. Most people, and I want to be fast because I want to cover all of these things. So please pay attention and follow me. Most people, when they think of marriage, this is the only aspect they think of. That's the romance of marriage. You are thinking of the, the sweetness of falling in love. You are thinking of the honeymoon. You are thinking of how you are going to have sex. I remember one of our brothers, when he was getting wedded, I saw his, his uh, wedding plan. You know, one of, one of the things contained in his wedding plan is I, after um, reception, travel to a, a location and have great hot sex. I can't, I can't forget. That's how I read it. A spirit-filled brother, you know, <laughs> who has kept himself. He was looking forward that this sister finally got in trouble was so excited. It's good. There is sex in marriage. You are, you are, you are thinking of pre-wedding pictures. You know, you see all the so-called ministers now. Pre-weddings. Pre-weddings. Everybody uploading all kinds of pre-wedding pictures. In fact, sometimes I just imagine that. When you say you are a minister of God, is it that camera follow you about? Because there are people who can actually tell you their life story now. Anything they are doing is on, is on social media. I, I just wonder. Pre-wedding is there. If they bought a car, we will see. It. If they buy a new house, we will see. It. The day they travel to UK. I'm like, even at this level that you call yourself servant of God, UK is still an issue to you. You must do video and put it online. If they are coming from Jeep, it's like they've never rode in a car before. If they are coming from Jeep, they will record it. Do slow motion. Do fast motion. Put sound there. Put it online. For what? It's like camera follows them everywhere. Anyway, but you know, yeah, you know, it's so, it's so lovely to post the picture of you and your lover on social media. Comment. Post a Bible verse. Nobody will see it. Just post the picture of a man and a woman. Hey! Lovely, I go love for something beautiful, sex, all, all manner of comment. Post something that will help their lives. They will never see it. They are blind. Except it comes to Roma. So you, those are the kind of things people think of. You start calling yourself pet names. I remember one day I went to Lagos and um, my one of, I went to see one of my friends. And uh, the, the girl that he now calls a wife then just suddenly came to this room and said, MD. And I'm like, Benga, when did you become MD? You didn't tell me. What company? He said, no, it's my dear. It's not MD. I said, oh, so, sorry. Oh. I didn't know you are now in these new levels. Pet names. Eh? Sweetie, baby. My, my angel. May a human being not be your angel. What can a human being do for you that you are calling human being your angel? Human being your angel. No human, particularly a woman. How can a woman be angel? <laughs> you better don't use human being as your angel. Let real angel be your angel, not human being. 
Anyway, but you know it's lovely. You call us. There's nothing wrong with all these things. You wear same dress. No, it's, it's so lovely when you see couples in church with same dress, Mister and Missus. You love it. It looks nice. That's the romantic side of marriage. You know, cuddling, having babies. You know when people dress their baby and you see them out and they take pictures. It's it it's just so lovely. It just there was one time almost every Sunday after service we'll take picture. I'll take picture with my family and I upload it and see before I know what is happening. Comment likes, you know, it we just I'm like, why do people like things like this? I've been posting other things. How come they are not moving? This one is what everybody loves. You know, there's a romantic side of marriage. There's nothing wrong. You want to write poems? You are dreaming of your life together. It's beautiful. You know, there's no problem. Oh, see, all this is inside marriage. That's the romantic side. The problem is that if that is the only thing you focus on, you will run into problem. It means that you have closed your eyes to other aspects. And those aspects, you will now see it in marriage. So let me quickly run through them. There is the reality of marriage. I just gone through romantic side of marriage. There is now the reality side of marriage. Number one that I have on my list is not all this list though, is, as is inexhaustible. I just want to give you this to have an idea. Job relocation. As love is doing you now. Just know that as a woman in particular, you will stay where your husband is. So if your husband is in Delta and you are in a loan, you know you are going to Delta. And you can't carry your job to Delta. Not every job that you can relocate like that. Then suddenly reality will deal with you. You now to ask yourself, do I want to leave my job? And does it worth it for me to leave my job for this man? I've seen women who have become redundant because they had a good job, they left it for a man. Thinking that, oh, they found something. Only for that man to turn again and say he's not interested in sleeping with other women. A lady quit a, a job in oil company to go and be with her husband. As soon as he got there, it was a family house. The lady was the one washing clothes. I'm telling you reality of marriage. The guy's mother is, was there. So she let, literally became a slave. And that's how the guy thinks marriage should be. So the lady was pregnant. She will wash clothes for the husband, for the husband's brother, for the mother-in-law, clean the house. This is a lady that left a job in oil company. She had no say. She could not call anybody. She couldn't use her phone. In fact, the day her husband saw her using phone, calling somebody, he took the phone and broke it. Eventually, one day while they were out of the house with pregnancy, she ran. Ran back to her father's house. She gave birth there. She went to do, what is it called? She now went to do computer course. Looking for job. She was working in a business center. From working in a oil company. Now working in a business center. The worst had not come until the day I told her that you cannot remarry. It's not me. I don't hold you now. You can go and remarry now. You are free. But if you ask me for my for my opinion on what the scripture teaches, I will tell you not my opinion. I will tell you what the scripture says. I will show you what the scripture says. She told me that, uh, ah, she didn't know that it was that hard. Though. I said, this is what Christianity means. Now, she was already in another wrong relationship. In another wrong relationship. See, there are some people, if God gives them opportunity to marry 10 times, they will marry wrong 10 times. The problem is not the person you are marrying. The problem is you. You don't know how to marry right. You don't know what to look for. And I tell you, see, let me tell you what I'm saying now. One day, everybody here, you will remember it. My only prayer is that you will remember it for good. But you see, one day you will remember. Some of you are not even taking it serious. Don't worry. I've seen enough. One day you will remember it. So, there is job relocation. You must ask yourself, who are you doing this kind of thing for? You may even relocate your country. 
You know the difficult part? There are, you see, there are women abroad. They will come and marry a man in, in Africa. So automatically that man must come and join them. I'm like, I don't think it's right. You know, some people do it and they are successful with it. Fine. But it's a big problem. Because I know one currently now. He called me, she was crying. They've been married for five years. The husband is in Nigeria, she's in the US. They've denied her husband visa. She's the only one there now with their kids working, working hard. If you know what it means to be in the US as a single mother, to work to pay bills, she can't even finance filing for her husband to, to come and join her again. Because they have to keep trying. And I'm like, the order is that you should marry and be with your husband. If you know you cannot come and live in Africa, don't marry an African. And if you are a man, you should ask yourself, who is getting married? Are you the one marrying or she's marrying you? Or you are marrying because you want to go to the U.S.? Uh, these are some of the things. Bef before you begin to fall in love with that person you meet online, just begin to calculate it. I know so many people now who are stranded. Just as there are some people who had who had done it successfully. At least I have a friend now. Last week, after three years, her husband finally joined her in the U.S. After three years, she to she married a Nigerian. All kinds of scenario. I know of a situation. A young girl. As soon as they got wedded, maybe the week or the following week after their wedding, the husband relocated to U.S. The, he planned it that he should apply a loan so that they would give him visa. If he apply as husband and wife, they wait to apply as husband and wife, they won't deny them because he was going to study. So once your husband and wife, they know that you don't want to come back. So that, okay, let me go, then you, you will go. So the lady applied, he went to U.S. Embassy, they denied that. Just two weeks after wedding. The husband said he's not coming back home. As at the last time, the situation still remained like that. So I said, what were you people thinking? She was crying. I said, I'm like, what were you thinking? Where are your family? Where are your parents? Nobody advised you. All this abroad, 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 abroad. Were you people hungry here? That the next thing is that you just want to go abroad, abroad, abroad. Now, what can you do? Are you, the, are you the U.S. ambassador that you are so sure you will get visa? You are just taking unnecessary risk. And you know, if you are, see these things, I was, I was, I remember a lady that I was thinking of marrying some years back. And then one day, she, she just raised it that uh, she had, she had filled form to go to Sweden. And I told her that was the end of the relationship. I said, because I'm not going to Sweden. She thought it was a joke. I said, I'm not going to Sweden. So she can't suit it. Eventually, we didn't even get to marry. So before I married my wife, I told her, if you have plan to travel abroad, don't marry me. Don't beg a person, as a man, don't beg a woman to say yes to you. You don't beg people to marry, to marry you. Marriage is covenant, it's understanding. Let the person be willing. Let the person know the cost and be willing. I'm like, see, don't marry me. If you have plans, if your plan is that, my wife is a doctor. So if you have plans, you want to go to the US, you want to go to Canada, you want to go to UK because it's lucrative there, yeah, don't marry me. I am not that kind of husband for you. As you see me like this, I'm fully in Nigeria. Only one thing can move me out of this country. I'm not somebody that um, I'm moving just because people are moving. If I want to move, it will be absolutely clear. And I said, see, I don't want to raise children in those kind of environments. I don't want because of a temporary gain to destroy the souls of another person. Because believe it or not, those environments are toxic. They are very toxic. And spiritually so. You know, principalities in every locality, they have, they have their characteristics. The principality over Nigeria is corruption. 
if you come here and you are not influenced by corruption, it will take something of Christ. In those society, some society is godlessness. It is very rare to find Nigerian parents, and I'm saying this responsibly, who have gone to give back to kids or take their kids to UK, US, Canada while they were young, and they raised them successfully as Christians. It's very rare. Even you can look at our church and check. They brought one of them back the other day. Early in the morning, I don't know, I was going to go and get something. I, I just saw him park somewhere smoking. Very early in the morning, around 7, he had left home with their jeep to come and smoke where people were drinking, uh, smoking weed. He just came from the U.S. We were young here. We were doing Sunday school here. And you know, they took him there. They had to bring him back now because he became a drug addict. Doesn't mean people don't become drug addicts here. No. But I can tell you, chances is very bright for you to raise godly kids here. And because they are children, they don't know anything. Before you know it, that influence had become deep-rooted. A society that feels that you don't have right over your parents, over your children as parents. If God is not leading you there, you better don't try it. So I'm saying, see, I'm not limiting you, please. You know everything I'm saying is a cancer. You are free to do whatever you want to do. I'm only helping you to see the cost before you enter into it. So that tomorrow you will not be saying, eh, I didn't know. I didn't know. This is the cost. Church relocation. Some of you are so used to your church. I'm telling you, I've seen marriage that the following day after their wedding, their first crisis was this issue of church. The wife wanted to go to a former church. The husband said, no, we talked about it. The wife said, no, this is a special program. The husband said, no. The wife left. The husband locked her out. I'm telling you true life story. A man that you can't attend his church, don't marry him. I know a lady. She attends MFM. She went and married a man that attends Celestial Church. That marriage didn't last three months. I'm telling you true life story. Three months. Because the man agreed to be coming to MFM. As soon as they got married, the man said she must go to Celeste. He said she can't go to Sele. Let me tell you, the marriage ended. She came to me. I said, you can't remarry. You're already married. That's the truth. What are you saying here? That's why we are studying this. And she married at 40-something, maybe 45, as a virgin. I don't think they had successful sex two days in that marriage, when that marriage broke up. And I wonder, I wonder, she didn't listen. You know how many people I had warned? They don't listen. They just believe that they are in love. It will work. It won't. If you, and you know many of these churches, they are destroying people's life. Churches that all you will do there is praying for enemies to die. Nobody will sit down and teach you Bible correctly like this. And then you now want to marry. You will now be saying you, you've prayed, you've prayed, you've caught visions. Do you know that she went through marriage committee in MFM? When the relationship broke up, she, in our own world, she went back to them. They told her, they said, we knew it wouldn't work, but we couldn't tell you. That is exactly what she told me, with our own words. That's why some of us will speak boldly to you. I said, this is wrong. If you like, go into it. If you like, don't, don't go into it. I told a lady some time ago, the man she wants to marry, she will be begging the man to go to church. She will be calling, did you go to church today? And she told me, I said, Madam, you have not found a husband. You will regret it. You will. And she was starting something. She was still a virgin. I said, You want to, this is the person you want to give your virginity to. You will regret it. Cut it off. Go and start again. She cut it off. In those days, the marriage course we were offering was still in early stage. She took that course. Did you know that? It, it doesn't always work like that. So let me. Not don't think that oh this is how it will work. No, but I want to tell you how our own work our own worked. Six months later, she met a guy, a virgin. The guy attends this church. Believe it or not. When she went to visit their parents, she came to me. She said, Sir, I felt unworthy to be married to such a Christian family. She said she had never seen Christians like this. They got married. They relocated to the UK. They have a child. 
She sent me money. I enjoyed it. So, yes. <laughs> this is the fruit of my labor. This one, I will enjoy it. I will enjoy it. I'm always waiting for the wedding anniversary or something we drop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now. I enjoyed it. So, please. That's the reality of marriage. Childlessness is a reality of marriage. As you are planning to get married, you are already thinking that we have four children. You may not. You may be prayerful. You may be godly. You may do everything right with God. Was Abraham not working with God? Samuel's mother, was she not working with God? Zachariah and Elizabeth, the Bible said they were blameless in all the commandments of God. Yet they didn't have a child. See, I am tired of hearing stories upon stories. The way women suffer in marriage is unbelievable. A man said, he said a man can tolerate a bad wife, but a woman cannot tolerate a bad husband. As a woman, you can't survive a bad husband. I'm telling you the truth. If anybody should take marriage serious and get it right, you as a lady, you must not joke with it. You see, if the head is correct, he can still checkmate the body. But no matter how good the body is, if the head is not correct, you will be mad. That's why you see, you say this is a madman. That madman, is there anything wrong with his hand? Is there anything wrong with his leg? Something is wrong with the head. See, as a woman, you have three kids. The man says he's no longer interested. Will you drop your children? But can you take care of them? And the man will go, he will, that man will go and marry a 20-year-old virgin and start his life. What will you do? You will suffer most in marriage. If the man is sleeping about, you can't say, well, I will show him. I want to sleep about. Men will sleep with you, eh? They will give your kidney. They will put it in your hand like this. They will bring it out. They will, they will sleep with you to your point where your kidney will fall out. Childlessness. As a man here, Settle it in your heart. By God's grace, you will have children. But if it doesn't come, settle it. It will not affect your relationship with Jesus. You won't go. Out. You know some men, their family controls them. A woman was telling me just today, her family told, told him that um, he should not adopt. Her. So a lady is already pregnant for him. And he's a pastor. Because they are childless. Imagine how that woman will feel in the house. That because I don't have a child, that's why you have gone to sleep with another woman outside. You must say to it that whether we have a child or not, nothing will, nothing will move me. Family will try to influence you, but you must take a stand before marriage. It was before marriage I told my wife, if we have a child or not in this marriage, it will not matter. And I meant it. I meant it. Marriage is man and woman. Whether we have a child or not, it won't matter. I had said to this. See, that, that's why Jesus said, sit down first and count the cost. Can you be in a marriage that is without a child? If you can't, don't go, don't go and get married. Otherwise, you just make that woman sorrowful. And there are many factors by which a woman may not conceive, which may not, in most cases, be her fault. <laughs> this is the reality of marriage. Menstruation. You know, you are just seeing all these beautiful women once or twice a week. There are days when they are sleeping in their house so because they have menstrual pain, pain, but you don't know. A marriage, where will you run to? You will know. A man left his wife because he saw blood stain on the bed. I'm telling you true life story. I'm not making this up. A man that I know, that I know very, I've slept with them in that house as a young person. I've slept inside that house. That man left his wife. They say, why did you leave your wife? They say, she farts. She farts at night. And then blood, blood, blood on the bed. He couldn't stand the wife menstruation. He couldn't stand it. So I the thing, if you are the type that some things easily irritate you, you know, as men, we are not used to blood. Women are used to blood. They've been seeing it every month since they reached puberty. You, you don't see blood. Where will you see blood? But she's used to blood. So that beautiful girl that you see, that you are like, ah, she's sweet. She has blood. I'm telling you reality of marriage. And you must learn to deal with it. Otherwise, 
you will get tired. You will be is is those ones you will now see outside that you won't know when they have their own blood. Those are the ones that will interest you. Say so you will be saying your wife is dirty. Prepare your mind. There will be sexual disappointment too. That's the reality of marriage. Somebody said the best way to avoid sex is to get married. Can you believe that? People want to have sex before marriage. Married couples don't have sex. Today, today, somebody was telling me that it's been five years since her husband told She wrote it on my post on Facebook so anybody can see. It was a comment. She put it there openly. She says, sir, this is what I've been going through for five years. My husband has not touched me for five years. Today, she put it openly. I've seen seven years. I've seen 13 years, 18 years in marriage. That the men will just get tired. Most men are driven by lust. So when they sleep with you enough in marriage, quickly they get tired. You remember George Adegoye, Rema? He wants to hear something openly. That's why I mentioned his name, because he said it openly. He said when he got married, you know, they kept themselves and they were excited to have sex. So they went for honeymoon and had sex. So much sex. She said on the, he said on the third day, he was like in the sitting room. And the wife came and said, yeah, we are coming. He said, he's coming. He said when the wife went in, he cried to God, God, is this it? He said, God, is this, is this marriage, is this it? He said, brethren, I was tired. <laughs> the third day. <laughs> He said, I was, he said it openly. He said that was when he asked God and said, God, what do you want to really do with my life? Because he now saw that there is no purpose in this one. This one that I've done only two days and I'm tired. Ah, this cannot be what I want to spend my life for. There has to be more meaning to life. Some of you think life is sex. If you don't know a better purpose to do with your life, sex will disappoint you in marriage. While you are courting, you'll be texting each other, ah, when we marry, and the, the, what I will do to you. He said, like that girl, by the time you start, 30 seconds, you say, ah, my niece are paying me. Because you didn't marry a uh, wrong girl. <laughs> she said, this same girl. You say, ah, niece is paying her. I'm just preparing you. I'm not saying it should always be like that, too, but just be prepared. There are, there are all kinds of things that can go wrong in marriage. What happened when you suddenly discover your man can't have erection? Can you cope with it? You know, some people are living with it. And some people are doing something. I went with a man one day. We went somewhere. And uh, he asked me to sit by his side. That somebody is coming. Wants to show me something. So this woman came to see us there. And then they talked. And you know. The, woman, the way they were doing. As if they were into something. So when the woman left. I said. Who is this woman? She said the woman's husband. Is impotent. That all the children in the woman's house. Is the one fathering them. In fact, the woman had twins. And he has, he's the one who has the twins. One day he told me, he said, ah, that his heart is drawing towards those kids that he's thinking maybe he should just open number and go. I said, you want to create properly? <laughs> this, was, this was several years ago. I said, sir, you want to create problem? Can you cope if suddenly you discovered your husband can no longer have sex? He couldn't have erection. Do you know how many homes this thing is happening? That their husband can't have erection. It's happening a lot too. Why do you think all these married men are buying this thing? I wish people are selling. And it's damaging to their kidney, to their heart. Many of them are on drugs. They need to take drugs before they can have sex. You see that that's no longer fun. <laughs> Submission. What does the Bible say about submission? Who can quote that? Who can tell me that Bible passage of heart? Don't look at Bible. Ephesians 5. What did he say? A, a lady, I want a lady to tell me. What did he say? Wives do what? You, you didn't quote it. You didn't quote that scripture correctly. You see, that's the problem. There's a reason why. See, there's a reason I say you should quote it. See, you don't, you don't quote it correctly, which means you don't know it correctly. What exactly did that scripture say? 
Let's read it. Let's read it. Pay attention. No, oh. pay attention before you say, I didn't know this is what it is. Take so pay attention. I'm warning you now. Oh. <coughs> okay, Matthew 5 20. Um, Matthew 5 22 to 24. Look at what it says. Number one, wives, submit to your own husband as unto the Lord. Ephesians. Sorry, Ephesians 5.22. What did I say? <laughs> Ephesians 5.22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. What does that mean? You are not submitting to the man. You are submitting to Jesus. Now, let's read verse 24 for, for time. Therefore, just as this church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be, be to their own husband in a few things. Is that what is in your Bible? What is in your Bible? Are you prepared to submit to a man in everything? If you earn salary and your husband says, put all those salary in my account. Are you ready? What's the meaning of in everything? So why are you excited getting married? Why are you excited? You, so, so that tells you, you know what this should tell you? You can't afford to marry a wrong person. Let me tell you, unbelieving men, they know this verse. They will use it against you. Church men, they've been in church for years. They've had it. When they marry you, they'll be quoting it to you. The Bible says you should submit to me in all things. Even though he's a very stubborn husband, he will be quoting it to you. And yet, the Bible says in all things. But what you didn't know is that this verse started from verse 17. Where it said, be ye filled, be filled with the Spirit. This scripture is only a man and a woman that are filled with Christ that can operate this kind of marriage. You, you want to operate this kind of marriage. You will now go and my, marry a man that is filled with Buddha. That has nothing, he said. He will, you, see, men use this scripture against women. That's why you will hear men preaching more about submission. They don't preach love. Because if you preach love now, if you go to love, Okay, I've even closed it. Let me open it and read love. Look at what it says in love. It says, husband, love your wives. How? Is it with feelings? Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Do you know what it means to give yourself for her? You must become full for her sake. He gave himself. And that is what he said. That gave himself means he suffered. He lost everything for the sake of his own wife. And that's what God is asking you as a man to go and do to a woman. Irrespective of whether she's submissive or not. Ask yourself, can you cope with it? If your wife begins to have an affair with another man, can you still love her like this? <laughs> you are beginning to have an idea of what marriage is. Strange men and women. You see, many of you, you didn't plan to cheat. But the Holy Ghost is not in control of your emotions. So you will marry, everything will be normal. You'll get a job, everything will be normal. Then in the office, you are working with a male guy. You didn't mean anything, you didn't plan anything. You don't know how it happened that you just developed feelings. Many of you think sex is, the, is a big problem. No, sex is not a problem. Feeling is a problem. The victory of Joseph was not just saying no to Potiphar's wife. Was Joseph not falling in love with Potiphar's wife? As a woman, the first thing a woman will do to seduce a man is to make the man to like her. Joseph resisted falling in love with Potiphar's wife. It would have been easy if Joseph fell in love. Your body will follow your feelings. Some men know these things. As a woman, your body will follow your feelings. 
Wherever your feelings go, your body will go. The man who can give you feelings, you will give him your body. Strange things have, I've seen it. I've seen several, 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 several married women who never planned to ever cheat, who never dreamt of unfaithfulness, who married as virgins. Suddenly, they started falling in love. They didn't plan it. They were never tested. Their emotions were never subject to the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. People don't know that their feelings must be strongly protected. You didn't plan it. The guy didn't plan it. He's a pastor. He's just counseling women. But there is this particular lady. They need to talk because the counsel is much. Suddenly, the pastor just knows that if he had not seen this lady in a day, it doesn't feel all right. That is, that is the point you should declare emergency. That's the point to die 911. But you think the point to die 911 is when sex wants to come in? No, is that point. Many of you don't know this. That's how strange men and women come into marriage. It's, many people didn't plan it. They didn't plan that they wanted to cheat. They didn't plan that they wanted to, to do anything shady. They didn't plan it. Most people didn't plan it. There are people who went into it knowing that I'm just getting married so that I have a wife who can give back to kids. I'm still going to be doing things outside. But most people just married faithfully. They didn't plan that this is going to happen. A lady was telling me she, she got married. They were doing fine. She got a job. And she fell in love with her boss. And she started sleeping with her boss. Recklessly. More than she was sleeping with her husband. Her husband eventually got to know. Drove her out. And then, five years after, she married another man. Guess what the problem is with that man? That man was asking for sex four times a day. When you marry, you understand what that means. Four times a day. The man smokes weed. When you smoke weed, you are in pro max. You are in pro max. She couldn't co if you know what people are, what people there is something I call the four the four sexual issues in marriage. Four. The reason is because four is involved. What I want to tell you now is true life stories of people. Four. Number one is a couple that their sex takes four days. Once they start sex, they take four days to conclude it. And I'm not exaggerating. There are couples like that. They, will, they, can, they can have sex four hours straight. The husband will not terminate the sex. We won't come until four days later. True life story. They will stop, they will rest, they will resume the following day. So each sexual encounter that some people do in five minutes, they do it for four days. Then there are some men. It's only the 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 they ejaculate in less than four minutes. So the woman has problem with that. Less than four minutes. Then there are those that um, they want it four times a day. How do you cope with sex four times a day? Don't you, don't you have something else to... You know some, some, you know some men don't have anything they are thinking. Nothing, nothing. All they think is just, is just to have sex. All they think is to have sex. You will be dressed for work. I know a woman... She said, once he's dead for the husband will say, go back to that bed. See, I'm almost late. He said, well, you are just wasting more of your time. He won't say more than that. She has to go back to the bed and take off her clothes. See, what did I call this are reality of marriage? <coughs> Am I saying these things are normal? No. I'm saying this because we want to come to a conclusion. For you to know that you must not joke with marrying the right spouse. Did you know that a man that is truly filled with Jesus will not behave like this? 
they won't have those kind of issues. Pregnancy. Pregnancy. You know, you are thinking of having baby. You are not thinking that that woman will get pregnant. When she get pregnant, so many things will go wrong. She will, her face will become disfigured. Her skin may not look good. Her tummy may become flappy afterwards. She may have pains. She may inconvenience you. You may have to be going to hospital sometimes three times a day. When your wife started, she said, yeah, yeah. what do you do? You are not a medical doctor. You put her in the car, you go to the hospital. And at that time, it's okay, no, it's just uh, something, so you come back. Three hours later, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you have to go again. You will now be asking yourself, how come people are having six children? <laughs> you know how many men are irresponsible? <laughs> let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. Loss of job. You left your job as a woman to be with a man. Everything is smooth. We are running the home together. Then he loses his job. What do you do? You know when you hear that people lose their job, they are human beings like you. They have families. Sometimes you don't think it like that because it's not you. People are losing their jobs every day. And they have families. It can happen. Snoring. Hey. Some snoring, you can't sleep. You have to wake the person up and say, ah, or you go to another room. Please. You see, we are saying this. <laughs> <laughs> then, smelling. You know, some of you, you are very neat. You are very, very neat. You smell nice. See, in marriage, something smells. Oh. Some guys will wear socks. As a wife, maybe you have to look for how you will be happy. He doesn't know that socks needs to be washed. They are just seeing everybody nice on the outside. What people are wearing under some some things green has changed to purple. <laughs> I'm telling you, some of them have go post go post. <laughs> you can score. You will see it in marriage, Joe. I'm warning you. I won't say more than that. What do you do if your wife doesn't know how to cook? And if the man also doesn't know how to cook? <laughs> See, let me tell you something. You will think it's a small thing. She will cook rice and stew. The stew will be raw. It will taste raw. The rice will be hard. Then you go and visit your neighbor. They say, ah, let's have a daddy shame. And then they serve you well-made semu. You know those semu that are, that are soft, like manna. And then a goosey with uh, all these assorted. And then they will serve it with love, with care. By the time you are done, you'll be asking yourself, is this not a wife? <laughs> How did I marry this one at all? Sickness. You know, somebody said, ask yourself a question. If I'm in the hospital bed now, who will be by my side? He said, whoever that person is, give my attention to that person in your life. If you fall sick now and you're admitted in the hospital, who will be by your bedside? That person is the person you should give attention to most. In marriage, it's your spouse. If my wife is sick now and they have to rush her to the hospital, and she has to be in that hospital. I will sleep in that hospital tonight. If I'm the one, she will sleep in the hospital tonight. Marriage will not just go, 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 go. I pray it goes smoothly. But I'm telling you, things happen. It may not be your spouse that will be sick. Your spouse's parent may be sick. Your spouse's brother may be sick. It will affect you also. You'll be saying to yourself, I didn't bargain for all of this. Now, bargain for it. All. We are saying it now. Some of you, you don't want anything to disturb you. You don't want anything to disturb your sleep. If she's in the hospital for one month, do you know that you'll be going to hospital for one month? That is what it is. So, if you want to leave her in the hospital, you can leave her. 
family influence. Some men are babies. It's whatever their family tells them they do. They don't have their own sense. Don't marry a man that does not have sense. A man that is being controlled by his parents and family. He doesn't have sense. That's why they are using their own sense to help him to have sense. It's as if they have borrowed him their own sense. But you see women, even though you see it like this, koro koro, you will still be going ahead. Thinking that when you marry, you will change him. Men don't change you. And you are not God. Only God changes men. The Bible says, beholding his glory, we are being changed. The only way men, men change is when they see Jesus. It's not when they see you. You can't change anybody. Only Jesus changes. Don't marry a man with the hope that you want to change him. No family can interfere in a marriage where the husband and wife are united. Any marriage you see family influence or destroy, it's not the family, it's the couple. There are many. Carelessness. Your wife may be extremely careless. Do you know that there are some people, they don't know anything about electronics. If she touch the chargeable lamp today, it will burn. If she plug something here, it will get destroyed. If she touch any things, we just be getting spoiled. And you are using money to buy it. And yet, you must accommodate that person. You must be patient with My mom is extremely careless. My dad is extremely careful. Goat that we had in the 80s. My dad wrote their names. The date they gave birth. Everything has a place he rises. This a year ago or so I went home. I saw it. It was there. He was that meticulous. He's now 90 years old. My mom, oh God. Forget it. They are two different people, but they've managed themselves to get that date. See, some people will, no matter how you shout, she will just be like that. She doesn't just know how to do more than that. Prepare your mind for it, oh. otherwise you just be shouting every day. One day you have high blood pressure and die. She will remarry you. Oh. I'm telling you, some people are eyeing your wife. Once you are gone, they talk. Alpha. <laughs> the obstacle has gone. <laughs> Let me quickly move to the responsibility of marriage. Uh, now, the list is not exhaustive. It's also giving you an idea that there's a reality to the face. Responsibility of marriage. Who came? One lady told me, she said, sir, I'm tired of cooking. I said, when you were getting married, didn't you know cooking would be involved? She said, she never thought of it. So what were you thinking of? What, were you, what exactly were you thinking of? Expenses. No matter how somebody says, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. The moment you marry and enter a house like this, is expenses you'll be dealing with. Dear, there's no gas. <laughs> Dear, the bulb in the kitchen is not working. <laughs> You'll be fixing things in the home. You'll be fixing things. That some men they are so lazy, their wife will be the one running generator. And, and the man will sit down. Well, it's no problem because some of them are happy in their marriage like that. See, as long as two people have figured themselves out and they are okay with it, there's no no problem. School runs. School runs. I was telling a lady who was telling me that um, she was going to get a new job and she was thinking of school runs. I said, it should not be you thinking. It should be your husband thinking. He said, eh. I said, yes. I said, why are you the one thinking? The husband is the head. You should think. I said, no wonder. Your husband is always saying he wants to have children. He's not doing anything. You are the one doing everything. You are doing school runs. You are the one cleaning. You are... So all he does is to sleep with you and then pay school fees. If that be the case, it's so easy. My daughter just finished her exam. I'm celebrating as if I'm the one that finished the exam. Because I won't take her to school in the morning. I won't go and pick her in the evening. That's a big relief for me. I have to do it every day. If Nepa fail, me, I can't fail. Every day, take her to school, bring her back, take her to school, bring her back. Do you know how long I'm still going to do that for? And I must pray. I must study my Bible. 
I must be a responsible Christian, responsible husband, responsible father. As a man, you have many parts. And to really be successful, you must do all the parts well. That's why when I hear preachers, they say, they pray 15 hours. I say, this one is not responsible. You are praying 15 hours. When do you have time for your kids? When do you have time for your wife? When do you have time for school runs? <laughs> home runs. You will, see, running a home is expensive. Particularly here. In fact, everywhere. You are probably not going to start with your own house. So, house rent. You know, some of you don't know how to save. You don't know how to keep money. And if your spouse tells you that you don't know how to keep money, you will get angry. You fight. Yes, you don't know how to. Any money that comes to your hand, until it finishes, you don't rest. You know, money is a spirit. Some people, as soon as money enters their account, until they finish it, they can't, they can't rest. You can't live like that once you are married. Family functions. This one gave me a lot of problem. I don't like going out. Naming, wedding, burial, anything. I don't like it. I just want to be on my own. But then, my wife's younger brother is getting wedded. I have to be there. And you have to be there almost all day. It stresses me. I just want to be on my own. I'm not the person that goes out attending things here and there. But you see, I will be irresponsible. To be sitting down in the house. At least some things. Those ones I have to do. Like the one that has to do with my wife's family. If my friend is getting where they, hey, what? Oh, I will send you something. That's it. That's the end. I don't need to go. I will send him something. We will remain good friends. But my wife's family, I have to show up. So don't think it's just going to be you, 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 you. They will have barrier on their side. You will both have to attend. They will have barrier on your side. She will attend. <laughs> There is responsibility in marriage. Sex will no longer be, sometimes it will no longer be fun. It will be responsibility, duty. Because you are not going to want sex sometimes at the same time. And if you are selfless, if you are Christ-like, you will have to satisfy your spouse, even at your own expense. Most men struggle to do this. Most men only have sex for themselves marriage. Most women are not sexually satisfied. Most women don't know what orgasm is. Because the man doesn't care. He just comes on, you do what he wants to do and he's gone. You will see that in marriage, you, it's a responsibility. You must have a, see, remove from your mindset, that mindset that you want to enjoy sex. Have a mindset that you want to make your spouse enjoy sex. That's the right mindset, mindset to go into marriage with sex. Otherwise, you will just have a frustrated wife. She won't know who to talk to. And the day she will make mistake and fall into sin and fall into the hand of a right man. It will be difficult to bring her back. <laughs> but because you are Christians, that will not happen. I believe that. Love. Love and submission. Serious responsibility in marriage. Every day. This one, every day you are practicing it. Every day you are loving a woman that is probably rude to you. And you are loving her absolutely. Because Jesus commanded you to do so. Every day. Spending time together. Cleaving. Did you know that all of these things can happen automatically? If you don't deliberately make time to, to be together, you won't be together. Many people are married. The only thing they do in marriage is to greet each other in the morning. Good morning. Then they'll greet each other in the evening. Good evening. That's all they talk. They don't talk. Yet, the lady will be on phone chatting with her family members and office colleague. The man will be on phone chatting with female colleagues and his family members. So they are bonding with people outside their marriage. They are not bonding with each other. Most couples don't talk. They just discuss business, things that has to do with family that involve the two of them. They don't talk. And these days of phone, you just see that this one will go into this room, is on phone. This one will go into this room. Most women complain about how their husband be on phone, but women do it too. If you don't spend time, the Bible says two are better than one, for if they lie together, it's not when one is lying in the north and one is lying in the south. He says if they lie together, if you don't understand that, there is a process for cleaving before you can become one. 
and nobody can do it for you. You must consciously engage each other every day. Discuss matters. That's when you can develop oneness of spirit and then you can pray together. And the Bible says whatever two of you shall agree on, he said he will do it. How can you have agreement when you are in disagreement? Let me go to the reward of marriage. The last one. Reward of marriage. Now, that reward of marriage, it has two parts. Because reward is positive and negative. Let me start with all the negative first, and then we'll go into the positive. So, depending on how you deal with reality, romance, and responsibility, that's what is going to determine your reward. Let me tell you some of the reward in marriage. Quarreling. That's a sign that in these three, you are failed. You will be quarreling every day. That is a reward. It's a product of how you have conducted yourself in marriage. You will reap quarreling. You will reap adultery. Oh, yes. It's a reward. If you, if you, if you remove all the safeguard that the scripture has put in place for you, what will be the end of the reward? Adultery. Child outside marriage. You know how many people are having child, children outside marriage? So many men. And it just destabilizes the dynamics of their family. That's what will happen. If a man does not know that he must cleave with his wife and is cleaving with somebody in the office, they will end up having children outside. Frustration. As a woman, you will regret getting married. You will regret the day you meet that man. It's a reward. You see, let me tell you something. When you make a choice to marry somebody, you face the consequence of that choice. People don't know. People will be crying. Somebody will say, I think God doesn't hear me again. I said, shut up. When you wanted to marry, did you follow the counsel of God? You married wrongly. You are now facing the consequence. Say, yes, sir, what should I do? Long suffering. There is a reason why God said, don't do something. He said, do not be unequally yoked together with unbeliever. You marry an unbeliever. You now say, what is the way out? There is no way out other than long suffering. So don't marry an unbeliever. Let there be no fellowship with light and darkness. What, what do you want to be the way out? If everybody is marrying wrong and they just go to God and God say, oh, sorry. Yeah, let me turn it around for you. Who will follow God again? We will all be disobeying and then go for God to remedy it. There are situations that the only thing you, that will save you is long suffering. You will suffer long in it. Separation may occur. Divorce. Hatred. They are all reward of the product of what you have been doing in that marriage. Argument. You will not be able to have meaningful conversation, just argument. Malice. They won't talk to each other again. Loneliness. You'll be married, but you'll be single. <laughs> many married are single. Many single are married. Is it not interesting? Many single are experiencing marital life. Many married are experiencing single life. Look at the irony of life. Suffering. You will suffer if the two of you do not organize your home correctly. Please, you will suffer. And it's not God punishing you. You are when you are making choice, there is consequence. Your children will be seen by the example. But there are good reward. If you understand these things and you follow the word of God, these are some of the things, these are some of the reward. Oneness. You will be so united with your wife. The Bible says a house divided against itself cannot stand, but a house united against itself cannot be defeated. You will experience oneness, love. In every home where the teachings of Christ is allowed to guide that marriage, there will be love. You will serve God together. Your marriage will be service to God. It will be peaceful. You will never, I've never had cause to go and report my wife to her parents. She has never had cause to report. We will never have that cause. Because by God's grace, we will always deal with issues. Amongst ourselves. It means you are not mature. You know, I know Mary, I know people that any little thing, the guy is already calling the parent of the man. I said, if you know, I said, 
they will never respect you. You are exposing your marriage. Everybody is managing something in their marriage. You, you are calling people. Daddy, daddy, he's not back. It's 10 o'clock. I've told you, we should not be late again. Yeah, yeah. Kindness. Godly children. Becoming like Christ. Stability. You'll be a role model. People will admire your marriage. Your family, they will make your marriage an example. There will be mutual respect. There will be faithfulness. There will be Christ-likeness. That's the reward you will get. Everything you are doing in marriage is a seed. You will reap it. If what you are sowing is the love of Jesus, you will reap all of these things in marriage. But if it is selfishness, wickedness, this is the end result of adultery, quarreling, frustration, separation, divorce, all of those things. So there is a reward. So whatever you get in your marriage is a reward of how you have conducted yourself in the marriage or the choice of who you person you choose to marry. I had somebody saying today that it does not matter who you marry. It's how you conduct yourself. It's a lie. Go and marry a devil and conduct yourself like an angel. You become a devilish angel. There is a reason the Bible says there must not be fellowship with light and darkness. You now say it doesn't matter. Just marry and conduct yourself right. There is no amount of hmm, submission you show to a man that Jesus is not the Lord of his heart. He will use it to manipulate you, to control you. A man that is God-fearing, he will be afraid to use the word of God to manipulate you. Because he knows that he himself must give account to God as your head. Let's round up with Luke 14, 28 once again. Luke 14, 28. That's where we started. What did he say? For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it? I have shown you the cost of marriage. It is now left for you to decide in yourself, do I want to get married? And am I prepared for this? And I want to beg you, please, if you want to destroy your own life, you can destroy it. But please don't destroy another person. Leave marriage alone if you know you want to destroy somebody's life. Leave marriage alone. I want to believe none of you will destroy your own life. But please, see, this thing is serious because even Satan wants to use you to destroy the other person. Particularly you men here. Satan can really lay hold of you and use you to frustrate your wife. And you won't know that that is what you are doing. You'll be wicked, you'll be terrible. You'll be saying, is that not that brother in fellowship? I beg you, get it right with God. You see, marriage is beautiful when you get it right. You become an example to people globally. Do you know the power of a right marriage? One, one correct marriage can transform a community. The devil knows this. That's why he's fighting marriage. And that's why God also is committed to teaching people about marriage. Please, remove divorce from your thinking. That's to tell you that you, the process of making that choice. I know we've gone through it before. Maybe sometime again, we will go through it. Let's pray. Let's just say one or two things and go. So you have heard about this. Talk to God and say, Father, if it be so between a man and a woman, it is better not to marry. But Lord, help me. Help me to get it right. May I not become a thorn in the flesh of whoever I will marry. Lord, if I may step to making mistake, Father, reverse it. Reverse it. Lord, please help me. You are the one that knows the heart of man. Don't let me make a mistake. Teach me, O oh Lord, how to conduct myself in marriage such that my marriage will glorify your name and your kingdom. My marriage will become an example in the society. Father, show me mercy. I just need mercy. Of myself, I can't do these things. But Lord, help me. Give me wisdom. Teach me, Lord. I'm ready to learn, Father. Please teach me. Please guide me. 
Thank God for his mercy and the way he has spoken to us. In your own price on that closet, you can go on and pray more about this issue. Let's round up our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.